Hi, welcome to Mark and Cindy's Food Forest here located in Tampa, Florida. We're actually in Lutz, a little bit north of Tampa. And we started growing about six years ago. And we decided to share with everybody what's growing in our food forest. And we want to go ahead and show you today, give you an overview of what we're growing. We're actually going to speak later on in each individual tree as the fruit is harvested and show you exactly what uh, each tree is about and describe it to you. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start this. Uh, we started about six years ago and I love tropical fruit and we started with two fig trees and the first year we had just an abundance of figs and we thought it was the greatest thing so we figured you know what I started researching on fig trees and it led to one fruit to another fruit to another fruit and I decided to start just planting as many tropical fruit trees as I could and it's turned out to be a great success so I'm telling you today that anybody because I had very little experience at doing this so if you're wondering can I do this or not if you can give it the time you can grow fruit trees just like we have. I'm not an expert at this, we're amateurs. I'm still learning about how to do everything, how to prune, uh, proper placement of the trees, and everything else that goes along with it. So we're learning still, but if I can do it, you can do it. So we're gonna go ahead and start showing you an overview of what we have. So come on, let's take a look of what's growing in Mark and Cindy's food forest. Okay, so here we have the sugar apple tree. This is the red variety. They have green sugar apple trees and they have red ones. They're, they're mauve. This is the first one I've had that is mauve and uh, this has only been in the ground a little bit over a year and we've got a lot of these little uh, flower blooms on here so we're looking forward to getting a good crop of uh, sugar apples off of this this year we'll see what we get. Here we have a Suriname cherry tree. This has only been in the ground maybe six weeks or so. This thing has taken off very well and we're looking forward to getting fruit off of that. We have a, another fig tree here. We have a papaya tree. This one has been kind of sparse but that's okay. We'll see what it gives off. It's given a few fruits. And another pink guava tree. And let's go over here and see what we have. We have a Barbados cherry tree. The Barbados cherry tree is a wonderful tree. This thing produces some very pretty pink flowers and gives off the, the cherries. As you can see, we've got a bunch here that are green and we got some ones turning red and uh, this thing produces several times a year and they're very tasty they have like three seeds in them and not a lot of meat but it's pretty good they're very tasty the darker they are the more tasty they are of course we got a bunch of pineapples we're gonna look at pineapple row later on and we're gonna look at the front yard and take a look at the pineapples we got decorating there right up there. Here we have another mulberry tree. Again they're very very aggressive trees. They provide a lot of shade. They're just beautiful trees. They, this one's produ been producing a lot of fruit also. We got our banana trees here that we planted about a little bit over a year ago also. And they're doing very nicely. We've taken a bunch of pups off of here and we planted the pups in some other areas of the yard. And uh, as we still saw earlier, and let's go ahead and take a look here. See what else we got growing on the side over here. Actually, let me show you here real quick. I have uh, sugar apples that I'm growing from seed and uh, these are doing very well. I started these out in little cups and now we got them in three gallon containers and by uh, next year they'll be like three feet tall. 
As I said earlier, I love sugar apple trees. And let's go in here. The other section of our garden, we have another Suriname cherry tree. We have another banana tree. And my wife has planted some poinsettias in the corners here, as you can see. She loves poinsettias. And here we have some papayas on this better papaya tree that we have here. This one's been producing a lot of papayas. So we're doing really good with that. And we also have a banana tree here that's producing some bananas. We cannot wait to try these bananas. I believe this is Cavendish bananas. And uh, this seems to be a really good spot. This is right outside our bedroom window. And for some reason, this is like the perfect spot. These banana trees here have been producing. This is our third tree that we've had here that's produced bananas. And we love it. These are very tasty, very good bananas here. And here's the chickens. They came out to say hello before we go look at Pineapple Row. These are the chickens that give us our eggs. And again, as I said earlier, they're very productive and we're happy with their their work so far. They're doing really good. Okay, here we have Pineapple Row. This is the side of the house. And we've planted just numerous pineapples. They're very, uh, very cheap to do. You buy your pineapples at Publix or whatever grocery store you go to. And Basically, you take the tops off of them and then you plant them in the ground and you grow another pineapple. It's that simple. We love it. It's just perfect. We, uh, it takes about two years for these to produce another pineapple, but it's well worth it. They're very decorative and I'll show you that in a minute. So here's uh, the front yard. We've planted a sago palm with some other palms and we got some pineapples that we put out here in pots. As you can see here, this one's producing a pineapple. And it's very decorative in the pot, so if you want to decorate your front yard, you can put a pineapple top. We'll talk about that later, uh, how, we, how we do that. And you just put it in the pot, and you got a, a decoration for the front yard, and it looks beautiful. This one here, also producing another, another pineapple. Look at that. It's beautiful. Pineapples are great. And we got more here. And here we go in the front yard. Just more pineapples. Buy a pineapple every week. You can plant one each week. They say here in Florida the best time to plant a pineapple is like the month of November, December. Because the pineapple cycle as far as its growing pattern does best when you plant them at that point. We got others here in the front. And there you go. They're beautiful. They just really make a great decorative, decorative rather, uh, front yard. Just adds a little, nice little picturesque uh, looking picture to your front yard. Okay, that's all we have for today. We showed you what we have growing and what we'll do. The next video will show you one of our fruits, more likely the pink guava. And we'll talk about the pink guava tree and we'll talk about the fruit at that point. So, until then, see you later. Start growing. You can do it and be blessed. Okay, what we have here is a pomegranate tree. And basically, this pomegranate tree is a believe I believe a Vietnamese tropical uh, pomegranate tree, and it's the kind that uh, is suited for Florida. So, if you're going to get something in Florida, you want to go with the Vietnamese variety. There's different varieties out there, and this is the one that is suited for Florida. What we have here is a mulberry tree. This thing started from maybe a foot tall, maybe about 
two to three years ago. These things grow very quickly. Beautiful trees provide a lot of shade. We've been getting fruit off of this tree for probably the last month and a half and it's starting to slow down production because uh, we've had some crazy weather here. You see one right there. But we've been eating off this tree for about a month and a half. We've had an abundance this year of fruit off of the uh, mulberry tree. This tree here is called the ice cream bean fruit tree. Most people do not know what this is. They've never seen it before. I didn't know about it until I saw it online. And it's basically a tropical fruit tree that produces these kind of like green bean, green bean looking pods that are about maybe anywhere from like a foot long or so. And you open them up and they've got this kind of like cottony looking fruit with a big seed inside of it. It tastes like vanilla ice cream. We've had this maybe close to four years in the ground. Uh, it got almost killed in the winter, one of the winters we had, but it came right back up. I cut it back way low and we've got uh, a huge tree now. It's doing very well. So maybe another year or two before we get fruit off of that. Here we have a mango tree. This is a Pickering mango. And this is putting off some fruit. We've had this one here probably maybe a little bit over a year or so. Kept it in a pot and we've got some mangoes growing on it so we're looking forward to trying the the Pickering mango and uh, looking forward to that here we have a sugar apple tree I have many sugar apple trees here we've got about two of them in pots I just planted four new ones in the ground and we've got another one that's been in the ground over a year and if you don't know much about sugar apples, uh, I stumbled upon this online. They are incredible tasting fruits. I have no way to explain it to you, but when we get to those, we're going to talk about that when we start seeing some sugar apples on there. And we'll actually give you a description of that. This here is called a guanabana tree, also known as a soursop tree, depending on what part of the country or the United States you're from or actually outside the United States they have different names for this but it goes by either guanabana or soursop and uh, I've had a little bit of success I've had some fruit off of one tree actually this tree here and uh, during the winter time the fruit fell off so I'm still working on that it's a very temperamental tree does not like the cold so we're working on this and we will get to that later when we describe all of our trees we have a lemon tree here. We've got a Meyer lemon tree and the Ponderosa lemon tree and we've got these in pots. We've got some fruit here actually growing on that and we've had some off of this. We got two of these last year we pulled off. They were very tasty, very good fruit and here we've got the Meyer lemon and we've got some a little bit of fruit on here and we've got more that's growing and we have some other stuff here this is a fig tree that's in a pot we've had this in the pot for several years and this is actually putting off some fruit also we got plenty of fruit growing on this one there you go you can see that there this is actually the most we've had on this tree in, in a year or so so we got plenty of fruit growing on that. This here is what's called a finger lime tree. I just bought this about a few weeks ago. And we're waiting uh, to transplant this into a bigger pot. Finger lime, if you haven't heard of it, it's like citrus caviar is what they call it. And it's basically of the, uh, obviously of the lime family. And they are like finger looking type fruits that you break open and it has little perlets in them like caviar looking with the lime flavor it's kind of like eating pop rocks uh, very popular now in gourmet restaurants they're using the fruit and it's starting to become very popular and we hope to get some fruit off of that in the future and here is actually one of our little corners of our yard here and we have what here is the cherry of the Rio Grande and as you can see what's happening here is that these 
mulberry tree, the ice cream bean fruit tree is kind of blocking out some of the sun. So we haven't had any blooms on it this year, maybe one. And we may have to replant that in another area in order to get more full sun to start producing the fruit again. Um, here's one of our vines on the fence and this is the uh, passion fruit. And we have uh, been having some flowers on that. And we have actually some fruit growing here. If we can find it, here it is. Yeah, there we go. Here's the passion fruit. We've had uh, a passion fruit vine last year that got killed by the frost. And we had a bunch of passion fruit on there. It really does well. If anybody's looking for something that produces fruit very quickly and an abundance of fruit, the passion fruit vine is an excellent choice. Now here we have what's called the strawberry guava tree. This thing is very hardy. It uh, does very well in cold weather. We've had some extremely cold weather here in Central Florida a couple of years now. And it's done very well. I'm going to show you some fruit off of that in a moment. Let's go ahead and enter the main garden. Welcome to our main garden. And this is basically got a bunch of trees. This is where we started our original planting. And here we go with the strawberry guava tree. I'm going to show you some fruit here. If we can find that. Find some fruit on here. There we go. Strawberry guava tree. Plenty of fruit on there. This thing does very well. They're very tasty. We'll talk about those once we harvest those. And here's the main garden. We started out here in the main garden actually planting just trees that were decorative like the uh, crepe myrtles that you see here. And then we had a lot of hibiscus and some other plants that we had planted for just looking good. And the more I got into the tropical fruit trees, we decided to pull those out. And we decided to just plant some more tropical fruit trees. So here you see one of our herb gardens. This is rosemary. That's basically growing <laughs> very, very well. We got some sage and other stuff. My wife takes care of this. And this is her herb garden. We use this on our foods when we cook. When we have pizza night, we take the herbs and put them on our pizza. Here we have a Florida Prince peach tree. So if you get a peach tree and if you're in Florida, you can't plant a peach tree that's from up north because it just won't work here in Florida. The Florida Prince peach tree is designed for Florida specifically. And we have plenty of fruit on here. We got like about, a, this is only about a year old. And this tree is uh, produced maybe about a dozen fruit. So we've been fortunate uh, that we got some fruit like the first year. It's only been in the ground a little bit over a year. And we've already got some fruit on it, which is marvelous. Here's another passion fruit vine on the other side of the garden. And no flowers on here yet. We're still waiting for that. See a papaya tree right here. And this one's been a slow grower, but we got a couple more that are doing a little bit better. Here is what we call a pineapple guava tree. And the pineapple guava, also known as feoa. And this has been in the ground maybe close to three years. And we've had one or two flowers on it. So, uh, from what I hear in Central Florida, it's a little bit temperamental. So we're trying to get this to uh, put off some flowers. And we will see what happens in the next, uh, in this year. Maybe we'll get some flowers this year and get some fruit on it. Here's one of the sugar apple trees. I grew this from actual seed. And uh, we have these little flowers that look like little peppers on them and uh, those turn into flowers if you can see those 
sugar apples we will talk about is my actually my favorite fruit of all time I just incredibly love sugar apples here we have fig tree and this is the one of the original fig trees that we put in the ground and this is what got us into growing we were just so happy when we planted these and we got figs the first year this one here was a slow grower so it took a little time for this one to actually produce fruit but uh, now it's like putting off a lot of fruit let me show you the other fruit tree here the other fig tree this one here is the one on the opposite side placed uh, planted in the same time frame this one here is starting has actually been giving a lot of figs we we got a bunch of figs off of this and this is what got me into growing I wanted to go ahead and learn more about the fig tree so as I looked it up I saw more things regarding uh, tropical fruit trees and that's what got me into growing even more fruit and we planted more trees see if we can find some figs on here for you to see uh, here you go there's a couple here there's one Here we go. There's a couple of small ones up here. Oh, here's a bigger one. Here's actually a bigger one right there. There it is. That's the one I'm talking about. What I found out was that most people don't really know what a fresh fig tastes like because they usually get them dried. So the first time we tried a fresh fig, we fell in love with them right away. And as a result, we decided that we would grow more fig trees. So what we have here, this started out to be originally Fig Island. We've got one, two, three, and four another fig tree here so these fig trees do very well in Florida these are mostly for the most part brown turkey figs and some other varieties uh, the reason we decide to plant these here is because they do well in the winter they survive the winter very well here we have a pink guava tree a Mexican guava tree and what's called a jujube tree which you don't see too many of those around so if you've never heard of a jujube tree we'll go ahead and talk about that when the time comes and we'll explain what that is and here we have a star fruit tree that I had in a pot I decided to put that back in here originally as you can see you see a stump there that was a sugar apple tree and it was huge we had abundance of sugar apples on there. I was in sugar apple heaven and that died during one of the winters we had a couple of years ago and we also had a star fruit tree here that was huge. The star fruit tree also got killed in the winter and then we had a mango tree here which also died in the winter so we decided to replace these with uh, at least the fig trees knowing that they would survive the winter and the cold weather. Let's take you out here. I have some more sugar apple trees I planted last week. And this is a baby one from seed. We got another baby one from seed. Got an olive tree here. They say growing olive trees in Tampa or in Florida is hard to do as far as getting fruit off of them. Then here is our, well let me show you the chicken coop here. We've got another sugar apple tree here, another sugar apple tree here. And right here is our chicken coop. This is the chicken's living quarters and they are now renting with an option to buy. There's chicken farmer court right here. It's where we get our fresh eggs from and our chickens are pretty productive right now they're doing well producing a lot of eggs planted some banana trees out here decided to just bring some out into the main garden 
few weeks ago, about a month ago. We have another uh, guava tree, pink guava. And then this here is a, another pineapple guava, like the fiawa that we saw early. This one's only been in the ground uh, a little bit over a year. So we're waiting to see what kind of fruit we can get from that also. So let's go ahead and check out another area here. And let's look at the extended garden that's only been in... Uh, I got the extended garden done about a year ago. A little bit more than a year ago, actually. Here's another sugar apple tree. We got that. And here we go. See the extended garden. Another papaya tree here. And here's another pink guava tree, which has given us several guavas. It's only been in the ground a little bit over a year. And this one here, another pink guava, that's only been in the ground a little bit over a year. And we have a guava on here that's been left over from the winter. So we hope to get that here shortly. Uh, should be ready in another less than a week maybe.